Hey, I'm Lucas. I'm a busy digital entrepreneur with dozens of different focus areas to manage and hundreds of new ideas coming up in my head every day. It seems like I need a ritual to keep me grounded. I need something to keep me on track, to keep me focused. That is exactly what the week review does for me. And in this video, I'm going to walk you through my process for the weekly review in Tick Tick. Disclaimer, I'm not saying in any way that my way is the best way, let alone the only way. I only hope that this video will provide you with some inspiration. So feel free to copy the template that I'm sharing in this video, but adjust it to your own needs. We're all different. And even for the same person during different time periods, you're going to have different needs. This is my version as of mid 2023, but who knows what it'll look like next year. If it changes, I'll make sure to upload another video. So if you don't want to miss that, hit subscribe. And now let's dive right in. We're looking at a dummy tick tick instance here. We're going to focus on tasks because that is the format I use for my weekly review. I don't create a separate list for it or anything. It's a task with subtasks. We're going to go through how I've structured it and of course, what it all entails. By expanding this task, we're presented with the first three layers of this review. This is, to me, already the most important part of the whole thing. What I found is that I don't always have all the time in the world, all the energy to do a thorough review that meets my standards the fullest. This review is composed of three different layers. The essential layer, the deep dive layer, and the cleanup layer. Now, as the name suggests, the essential layer is the one that I always want to get done without compromises. If I do have extra time, extra mental headspace or energy. I can take care of this one. And if I want to be really thorough, I can also add the cleanup. So let's dive into the essential one first to see what it means. Expanding it reveals three categories that I found to be very intuitive if you do them in this order. Over the years, I've experimented with just one basic list. And right now, this is my structure. We start with Inbox Zero. I have a full video explaining Inbox Zero, so you can watch that if you want to know what it means exactly. Here is a complete list of example inboxes. I'm not saying I have all of these. I don't use Instagram, for example. Uh, I don't actively use Twitter, and I don't have Facebook either, but you may. And the idea here is to Break up your inboxes into the categories that are relevant to you. For me, those are going to be physical, computer-based, and phone-based. So you apply a bit of context within your inbox cleanup exercise so that you don't have to run around, right? From your mailbox to your computer to your phone and repeat like a circuit. That's not the point here. We want to do this quickly and efficiently because honestly, it's not always fun. We all know that. We have the physical category here. Computer category for email, things like Slack, LinkedIn, maybe Twitter. And again, if you use these on another device, just modify this template to your own needs. Same goes for phone, things like WhatsApp, SMS, text messages, but also app notifications. I try to get all of this down to zero. Make sure you are aware of your inboxes. Watch my video if you want to find out how you can do it because it is super powerful. It helps you collect all the inputs that is coming to you from an outside source. That's what this is all about. Next up, we're looking at task management. And here you can see the tick tick inbox. Now you might think, why is that not part of inbox zero? That is because the tick tick inbox is where I process input that comes from me. Now it might originally come from a place outside of me, but I've decided that I'm going to manually save this to tick tick to the inbox and tick tick. I'm going to write this down. Now it is time to process that input in the inbox and decide what it is. Is it a complete project that I can create a list for? Is it a standalone task maybe that I can just add to that list? Make sure I empty that inbox first so that I am now left with actually organizing my tasks, part of which is evaluating my next actions. In other words, is everything in my system that is marked as next actually something I can do now? Or are there still blockers for this action, meaning I shouldn't consider it a next action just yet? Perhaps there are other tasks in my system that have become next actions, but haven't been marked as such yet. And if my next action filters like errands and phone, which 
are based on the next tag plus a specific context, if they don't show me what I can do within that context, I might miss it. And the weekly review helps to make sure every task in my system that is marked as a next action is marked so correctly. There might also be actions that I can edit. Perhaps the meeting has shifted a little bit and maybe I need to remove some actions. By waiting for has anyone or any sort of outside organization made any commitment to me? And again, the question is, is there anything to add, edit, mark complete or remove? And asking these questions in this format to myself really still helps. Even after all these years of doing it consistently, I still find it helpful to have the prompt. Now, of course, if you feel like that's unnecessary, you can just name it waiting for. Again, it's all up to you. And then lastly, we have projects. Is the next action visible from within the project view, so to speak? Anything to mark complete there. Archive a list if a project is complete. Maybe postpone a project to the backlog, the not now or someday maybe list, whatever you call it. Or again, better, you should remove something. And lastly, we have time management. The first portion of it being the calendar. I use the weekly review to prepare for the upcoming week, to check if all the calendar entries in there are correct, to add any, for example, if I want to schedule my gym sessions around my meetings that I may have. Speaking of those meetings, are they all definitive? Have I RSVP to everything? Perhaps block some time for focused work? That's what I do with the update calendar portion of the weekly review. And again, it's non-negotiable, which is why it's part of essential. My agenda items, my talking points that I have with colleagues, for example, friends I might meet, meetings I may have, and you could argue whether this is part of time management or a standalone category, make of that what you will. I've decided to put it here partly for efficiency and partly because having an agenda that is well prepared really does help to shorten meetings as opposed to having them sort of free form and they become very long winded. We've all been there and this helps to avoid that. And lastly, the reminders. So is there any task in my system that I want to get a reminder for perhaps before the due dates, perhaps a location based reminder as well. Once I arrive at a certain place, I want to see a certain task pop up that I can only perform in that location. I can do both as well. So reminders and TikTok are a separate entity from due dates. I cover this all in my course as well. And that's about it. So again, this is what I consider essential. I could wrap it up here. And once I'm done with it, I can just mark these complete, right? If you mark the parent item complete, all of its children are also marked complete. So that's pretty simple. But before I move on with the rest of the weekly review, I wanted to quickly add a disclaimer that you do not need to use TickTick -tick to do this, obviously, as you can maybe see, it's just a simple checklist in the end. You could even use pen and paper. However, I am using TickTick -tick and I've been using it for well over a year now. It's been working really well for me. And in fact, I've outlined my entire system, which this weekly review ritual is a part of in my TickTick -tick Power User course. So if you're interested in upping your productivity, go to my website, I'll leave the link in the description and enroll for the TickTick -tick Power User course today. Now let's say I do have some extra time and I want to do a deep dive, as it's called. In that case, we're going to go a bit more into the higher horizon, so to speak. We're going to, for example, look at our goals, perhaps our long-term goals and monitor the progress. If we are able energetically or time-wise to sort of zoom out a little bit, take a higher perspective, this is one of those things that I would want to do. Look at my goals and see how I'm progressing. Same for my vision that I've crafted from my life. Am I still living in alignment with that vision? Next up, we have the backlog, also called the not now list or the someday maybe list. And in this exercise, what I do is I just quickly scan through the backlog, see what's in there and ask myself, is any of this actionable now? Can I turn this into an active project or an next action that lives in my system as opposed to having it just sit there as a postponed item, if you will? but not more than that. We're not going to ask ourselves another question then, is this actionable? And now I'll get to the difference in the last section of the weekly review here. Secondly, we have the personal wiki. Is everything in there still correct and relevant? Anything that needs to be rehearsed perhaps? Speaking of rehearsing, that is something I elaborated on in the video I created before this one. So check that out if you haven't seen it yet. And you can also use it to rehearse your book summaries, for example. Right. If you want to make sure that this information sticks, context to all the tasks in my system have the correct 
context assigned? Do they even have a context assigned? That's a helpful question to ask to make sure you don't miss any tasks. You can do so by going through your tasks from the list here and also use the all tasks list, which I actually have invisible at this point in time. So I'm just going to quickly boot it up here by going here and selecting show under all. Now I can quickly go through tasks and see if they have a context assigned to them. And if not, do something about it if I think that's necessary. So that's the deep dive. Now, if you have even more time and energy available, we can look at the cleanup, which is mostly digital in this example. The first part of it being composed of audits. This is where you don't just ask yourself, is everything in here actionable, yes or no? But you also take time to deliberate whether something is potentially deemed permanently irrelevant and remove it, or perhaps to reorganize the lists or break it up into multiple lists even. Because I know, and perhaps you recognize as well, this list can become a bit of a dumping ground. And that's a risk you don't want to take for too long because then you just kind of postpone everything into a sort of black hole that you never look at. And this exercise helps to address that, to make sure that the backlog, the not now, the Sunday maybe list is not just a dumping ground, but a place that is revisited regularly. And sometimes relevant items are found and pulled out of there, but that's not going to happen if you've never cleaned it up in two years. That's why I do want to tackle this at least once a month, ideally. Same goes for the personal wiki, basically. Instead of just asking yourself, is it something I need to rehearse, for example, just go ahead and remove something also that's permanently irrelevant. So you take that extra step. And lastly, that is true for context as well. So you don't just look at, do all my tasks have context and are they correct? But you also look at all the context you have inside of your system, you can do so here, and seeing whether they are so relevant. And a big red flag is if there is no task for this context and there hasn't been for a while, you can then either rename or rearrange or remove it as needed. And the same goes for other types of contexts. Like what if you no longer use energy labels or whether reference labels need to be changed. This helps to keep your system clean and prevent clutter. So that's the audit of the system itself. Now you can take it a step further even by going about a digital cleanup. And this is just about your machines, your computer, your phone, uninstalling any unused programs, removing any unused files, emptying the trash, perhaps cleaning up the desktop. There are so many things you can do to keep your machines clean and clutter free. It really helps, but it can also be a major undertaking, which is why I don't do it every single week. However, I definitely want to do it as often as I can, as often as I find time and energy for it, which is why it's part of the cleanup layer, so to speak. And once all that is done, we can mark the weekly review complete as such. The one thing I do want to show before we actually hit complete on everything here is that you can turn this into a template, which is exactly what I've done. If you go to the main task and you go to the right bottom corner, you can press save as template, give it a name and you hit save. And once you do that, you can create a new tasks from anywhere. Select add from template. And here it is, the weekly review we just looked at. And you have a new one right here. Now, the reason I use a template instead of a recurring task that you could have on repeat every week, that makes complete sense. You can certainly do it. You can certainly add a repetition weekly. However, for me, what I found over the years is that I don't do my weekly review at exactly the same day in the week, every single week. Instead, I do it whenever my time, my schedule allows me to do it sometime during the weekends, anywhere between Friday to Sunday. Sometimes that's a Saturday morning. Sometimes it's a Sunday evening. I don't want to add an additional layer of stress. If say my default date is Saturday and I didn't do it that day, have an additional overdue task that's staring me in the face. Sometimes even it doesn't happen a lot, but let's say you're sick or you're on vacation and you're skipping a weekly review. I don't recommend doing it, or at least not too often, but it happens. We're all human. That then also just creates an additional strain on your system. If you have these due dates staring you in the face, whereas with a template, you can just import it and use it as needed. So go either direction. This is just what I do. It's not meant to serve as gospel, but I do hope that you found this list helpful and that you can now recreate it to your own needs. Make sure you watch the supplemental videos that I've mentioned about inbox zero or rehearsing your notes or take my course. If you want to get a glimpse into the full system of which this weekly review is a part. And there you have it. I found that breaking up my weekly review into these three different levels 
really helps me to maintain the habit because it can be a bit overwhelming at times. If you are low on energy, perhaps you've been sick, still recovering, or you just don't have a lot of time. Making sure that at least the essentials are covered is what's helped me stay on track with my focus areas, making sure the important stuff gets done. And in the end, that's what it's all about. Leave your suggestions for the weekly review in the comments. I'm really excited to hear from you guys how you're doing them as well. And we can then learn together as always. So thank you for watching. Make sure to modify this template to your own needs and I'll see you in the next video.